I want to uh, just ask you about the upcoming presidential election. Um, is there any way that might be influencing chart or fund flows? For example, uh, former President Trump, I know, obviously favors less regulation. Uh, and that could, could that benefit, I don't know, financial services firms or healthcare or something like that where, where there might be he might want less regulation, for example. Is there, is there any play here, even or even around the, the presumptive Democratic nominee, uh, Kamala Harris? Yeah, so I mean, well, obviously, we saw former President Trump's poll numbers move higher in, in July. And at the same time, we saw a different sort of Trump trade 2.0 effects take place, where, like I said earlier, you know, China ETFs had outflows. And of course, former President Trump's very harsh on tariff policies and trade policies. We saw Mexico ETFs have outflows, basically 11% of their overall assets, emerging markets, same thing. And then on the regulation front, financials, they would uniquely benefit, they're more service-based, but also maybe potentially less regulatory constraints that could help bolster balance in capital, uh, balance sheets on their capital. So we saw some flows obviously in the financials as well. Domestically oriented industries like small cap did well as well. So I think still too early to tell, but as those poll numbers are erratic, you're going to start to see shifts in and out as the market tries to suss out where you want to be based on some fiscal policies that are coming to the market in November. Right. Again, this is sort of a, a political play here, but I mean, to the extent that former President Trump relies a lot on tariffs and protectionism, that would be a negative for international investing. It would be a negative for China investing, it would seem to me, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we've seen that in the flow so far. I think another thing that people are looking at uh, as his poll numbers were going up was the reflation trade or the um, reshoring trade. So basically bringing supply chain and processes back to the U.S. And that would ultimately favor small caps. We saw that about a month ago when there was big inflows and positive performance into the small caps. And that's because they rely on a lot of revenue from the U.S. So bringing more jobs back, more processes and supply chains back within the U.S. will help drive that. Yeah. And yet that's a very expensive process, isn't it? I mean, globalization worked because it centralized supply chains, which reduced costs and get, created very efficient distribution lines. If you're going to dismantle that, start building fab plants, uh, semiconductor plants in Arizona for tens of billions of dollars, maybe it's better for national security reasons, but it's going to cost more, right? It's inflationary to do that. Well, I mean, I think that's another thing about this election is that some of the policies on both sides of the aisle are likely to be inflationary, and I think they're also likely to extend the fiscal deficit, too. And also, I think what I think part of most people can agree upon is that this election is likely to stem some volatility. So if you take those three factors combined of like maybe potentially reflationary, extending your fiscal deficit, which is never really a good idea, then also macro volatility because of uncertainty, I think regardless of policies, one of the plays that investors are going to be considering is gold just to manage those macro risk shocks, but also the impact of some of these policies on your fiscal deficit and inflation. Yeah, it's not easy to figure out. Um, just We're now in month August now. Traditionally, August is a lousy month for the stock market. And it's also a month where we traditionally see outflows in ETFs. It's one of the few months, I think, you, you're the expert, isn't it? You usually get outflows in ETFs. It's, it's usually the weakest. We've seen outflows. Why is that? Why? More people are at the beach. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, that could be one reason. It's flowing out to the ocean? Where, I mean, what happens? They sit there and they so, say, nah, I'm not putting any money in. I mean, yeah, that's obviously anecdotal. But, um, you know, part of it is there's a lot more macro risks in August. I think a lot of people don't realize that. Fundamental news stops. You don't really have as many earnings reports. And lately, Jackson Hole has been a very big market moving event. And now this year, it's going to be, we're going to be sort of stuck in this macro vortex. You're going to have a lot of economic data coming out, trying to figure out what the Fed will do next. You're going to have a handful of political headlines, including the DNC. And it's going to be a lot of these macro risks. So August is presenting a little bit of a challenge for this $1 trillion mark. But so far this year, the pace that ETFs have been on have been sort of you know, uh, unstoppable sort of force, so yeah. to speak. How about you? Um, we were talking about maybe a trillion dollars in inflows this year. We're, we're heading, we're 60% of the way there, it looks like. Can I, we do that? I think we have a good shot at it, but I think investors are going to want to see some clarity from the election. So I think those last two months are going to prove to be the turning point and, and telling point whether we can get to one trillion. There's a ton of money on the sideline, like Matt pointed out earlier, 
I think if we continue to grind higher, people are going to race to put that money to work before the end of the year if there's no pullback. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it's a very tricky market to call right now. This is why Jack Bogle, founder of Vanguard, a man who influenced me a lot, said, it's time in the markets, not timing the markets that matters here. You might want to just understand what your risk factor is and stay invested and stay with your plan at this point. Very tricky to go in and out of the market in these kinds of situations.